Hello, uh, welcome to Swarajya Direct Line. Uh, my name is Amar Govind Rajan. I have with me here Harsha Bhatt, who is Swarajya's senior editor, reporting in from Mangaluru, where we have a sort of a peculiar problem uh, developing with the places uh, border with Kerala. Two southern districts of Karnataka, Dakshin Kannada and Kodagu, have like every other district in the country closed their borders for outside traffic. However, this has caused an issue. with kerala's northern districts which are very reliant on karnataka southern districts for medical care and essential supplies and uh, kerala has been asking for the borders to be opened and karnataka has a has an issue opening them that you know given the quarantine and given how uh, how kerala is today a hotbed in terms of number of cases of uh, covid-19 being reported positive harsha what exactly is the issue just how close uh, to karnataka's healthcare centers and essential supply points is kerala's uh, northern uh, are kerala's northern district, districts tell us a little about the geography there yes uh, so the northern tip uh, so kasargod district shares the border with the uh, dakshin kannada as far as the two states are concerned and the tip of the state is hardly 10 to 12 kilometers away from accessing the the hospitals that are available at the center of mangalore or dakshin kannada so also at the border within within 5 to 8 kilometers of the border from uh, at talapadi you also have a cluster of hospitals that have sprung up in the last decade which uh, which see a lot of patients from kasargod because kasargod is not known for its medical facilities and uh, uh, 100 ambulances are said to be i mean as per news reports 100 ambulances per day are said to be ferrying between the two and kasargod is if i'm not wrong uh, to you for want of a better term uh, the district with the highest number of uh, corona yes in the country cases. in the country as of in now we have i think the it stands at 90 and is the highest uh, uh, highest number of cases and as far as dakshin kannada is concerned of the six which were there till last week uh, five of them were kasargod residents right and 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 this is a district that is only 10 kilometers uh away from medical clusters and hospitals in karnataka which uh, which the residents of kasargod yes. want to access today yes uh, and that is being said as being ruthless on the part of dakshin kannada which which did allow until a few days ago ambulances were being allowed but there was also news that the district administration says were well, people were using ambulances uh, to move across the state borders which might be one off but uh, right now for that reason uh, they are not willing to let ambulances in so is this a case of only ambulances being uh, being stopped the, and, and to be yes all so other we, essential services are being uh, being let go like uh, if you if you at the border the uh, gas and all other goods and whatever is to be moved to kerala is being let to move but what you what what these border point checkpoints don't want is traffic coming from inside kerala to enter karnataka correct yes yes and especially because they fear that uh, we do not have the neither the lab uh, neither a lab in dakshin kannada to test uh, to test the covid cases because we are all sending it to shimoga we had got one in manipal which also got cancelled right now uh, they say the i think around 2 Two two and a half thousand people are already home quarantined in uh, Mangaluru, so we do not have the capacity. They say that in case the Kerala pattern, which is in Kasaragod, were to infiltrate into our district. But but what would the Kerala government be uh, doing now? I mean, I'm sure Kasaragod and other northern Kerala districts are also connected to other districts in Kerala. I'm sure it's a little uh, further away than Mangaluru. Mangaluru is obviously more convenient for them yeah, mangaluru is the closest and the other was kodugu and that is why kodugu also wanted to seal its borders because it, uh, as far last week was concerned when uh, uh, kasaragod was still around 50 odd cases uh, kodugu had just one so they they also feared that this would have uh, this would lead to people moving there for for health or medical reasons and that's why they also sealed their borders and said the essential services can be moved via mysore but uh, as far as kasaragod's access within kerala is concerned the closest facility was as far as its lab is concerned they were sending it to koikode in 200 kilometers away until uh, 
I think two days ago, where they have now uh, agreed to set up a testing facility at its central university in uh, in in Kasaragod. So the Kerala Kasargod government district. is is responding uh, to some degree. Uh, as far as far as uh, response is concerned, people have been uh, people have been very proactively asking for attention because that is a district they say has. Uh, has always uh, been a victim of state apathy it is al- always called the 14th district of the state which has uh, which is also one of the states which has district all uh, 14 districts Kerala. correct yes now now uh, how much of this you know these three districts uh, these two districts dakshin kannada and kodagu and given how aggressively they are closing their borders with kerala um, how much of this is is due to due to the sense that the kerala government is not doing enough to control the covid-19 outbreak over there you know just to remind again kasargod absolutely because uh, the first the, patient correct, the first patient is not uh, only the, made it to national yeah yeah kasargod is not only the district with the highest number of um covid-19 patients it is also a district which has seen a lot of uh, quarantine rules being uh, flouted in the sense that flouted uh, and uh, flouted uh, where uh, last week uh, f- health workers who were there to ensure people were in home quarantine were attacked by people the police had to intervene even with the district collector's order they also were uh, they also met a similar fate by general people and uh, the the person who who uh, fortunately or unfortunately for uh, them landed at calicut airport see the other uh, other thing is uh, like karnataka congress and karnataka bjp have been having a twitter spate where they're saying like uh, why not shut the airport so that is the thing until calicut airport opened a few months ago um, for kasaragod people mangalore airport was the only way and you know the kind of uh, um, migrant population a lot of kasaragod uh, so how's the government of kerala taking it how is how- how you know these are patients from kerala who are going into um, karnataka for essential treatment like dialysis these are diabetes patients and so chemotherapy, on chemotherapy dialysis all of it even so a how, simple how delivery responding? so there are two ways karnataka kerala could respond one is to set up uh, and provide they could set up mobile treatment. clinics or some temporary health facility uh, which which is currently not being spoken of although they say uh, there is a kasaragod uh, medical college which is being uh, uh, which is being propped up to uh, handle covid cases exclusively and uh, the last we heard was that it should be up and running in two days but uh, even as far as kannur is concerned for example they were they had blocked their borders there too they were not taking patients from kasaragod to kannur either so, so because kannur so, was having its own cases so kannur a district in kerala is not taking patients they had locked their borders they had sealed the borders I mean, and to, we to had ordered for want, of a, for want of a better term they are not taking uh, conventional patients patients looking for dialysis for chemotherapy uh you know the sort of regular treatments that go on during normal people are also not going uh, amar because um, they 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 are generally even even doctors from kasaragod uh, prescribe hospitals or advise people from kasaragod to head to hospitals in mangalore so kannur is is not even an option right now for for want of an option maybe they they can access kannur which again might be out of access because the borders of the district are sealed but the government there is is trying to get the borders to open for regular treatment and uh movement of patients with karnataka right the kerala government it is making it is trying to do it uh, the cm had written and uh, that is when uh, the central minister had tried to intervene but as far as uh, this border is concerned uh, no no action was taken and uh, right now the mp from kasaragod is said to have uh, um uh, approached the supreme court Uh, asking for karnataka to open its borders at talapadi uh, what happens next is something that we will all have to wait and watch because the district administration reiterated to all all of us yesterday that uh, and it was almost like it was assuring dakshin kannada saying no we will not let kasaragod people come into the city as heartless as it sounds for people on the other side of the border it is being taken as an assurance by people in this district here and and the local uh, local mp in mangalore and kodagu were are they were very vocal for? about it they have very clearly said this is a question of our district's health and how we handle this pandemic right now so yes we are not making compromises very difficult situation indeed
Thank you so much, Harsha, for uh, reporting from Mangalore. We will continue to follow your reportage from there. Hopefully, the situation in uh, North Kerala, Karnur, and uh, Castle Gold are resolved as soon as possible, and uh, you know we overcome the situation. Thank you so much. Thank you.